We are on the verge of the largest crypto bull market that you have ever seen. This should dramatically change and reshape the entire surface of your life. You do not want to miss this pump. This week is one of the largest weeks that you will ever see in crypto. The question is, when will this pump happen? And what major events lie ahead of us this week? And how are they gonna play out? So the question is, is the pump gonna happen this week or later. And we're going to answer all that in today's video. Additionally, we're going to talk about some nice altcoins and catch you up on that at the end of the video as well. So this is one you really don't want to miss. Happy Monday. And without further ado, first thing we're going to do is cover the Bitcoin price. And as you can see on this news and everything that's been going on recently, it's been rallying, rallying pretty dramatically. And if we come over here, we said, yet yeah, the last ETF inflow, which was on Friday, saw a net inflow of 383 almost $384 million. So what did these guys know that everybody else doesn't? Well, we're gonna tell you about that in today's video. And if you're excited for that, if you're excited for the alpha that we share on this channel, do yourself a favor. If you're not already subscribed and you haven't destroyed that bell button notifications all, do that because again, guys, these videos are alpha. We, just so much stuff we've been sharing with you guys, and we're about to cover that in the video today as well. But as you can see, Bitcoin is just massively outperforming every other asset class, really, as compared to the US 500, the US 100, gold. Bitcoin is just destroying it. And as we come over here, we have this huge event happening this week in Nashville. As you can see, former President Trump is the headliner there. And there's a, some really, really big news that he's going to drop at this event, potentially. You can also see you got major people like RFK, Michael Saylor, Kathy Wood, Edward Snowden, Russell Brand, just packed house, Vivek, et cetera, et cetera. This is what I was actually really wishing that I would go to. And as you can see, Andrew King over here says, BTC is now rumored to be pushed forward as a national asset held as treasury reserve as a platform for many politicians. Whether they're successful or not in this first attempt doesn't matter because Bitcoin has now an extremely visible asymmetric upside scenario. If successful, they're are very plausible asymmetric midterm scenarios for 500,000 to a million dollar price targets. And even if you have probabilities of that at five or 10%, Bitcoin here is very underpriced because the market just moved up from less than 1%. US executing on this would undoubtedly have many other countries follow its lead. First domino to fall, of course. On top of this, you may have heard rumors of Asian conglomerate stepping up to play Coinbase microstrategy types of roles. These bullish developments have come quicker than expected, but not complaining. It's going to be one hell of a month. And as you guys can see, I've been saying this a long time ago. As you can see, four months ago on Altcoin Daily, this video has appropriately almost 420,000 views. Let's listen to this. Just in a sentence, Bitcoin clears at least this price, this cycle. What do you think? 500. You can see I hesitate there because people think that you're crazy when you come out with what you really think thousand dollars at least five hundred thousand this cycle yes of course so i i, I you know, <laughs> yes of course it's because i knew like i've been in this game for 12 years guys well over 12 years and when you see what's happening i've been not just kind of in this space for 12 years i've been obsessed with this space for 12 years following the news the major developments the adoption the governments the banks the high net worth individuals all over the globe and so for me, this was obvious. For me, this was absolutely obvious. Like I said before, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. And we know that when is coming sooner than later. As you can see, the US debt clock is absolutely hemorrhaging in debt. And if you want to know how much this is, well, look, this is right now almost $35 trillion in debt. Let's put that in context for you guys here just a second. If you were born 30 years ago, that's not even 1 billion seconds. That's 946 million seconds. Now let's put that in more context. If you were to earn $1 for every second that you've been alive, if you were 30 years old, you still wouldn't be a billionaire. Just let that, let that sink in for a second. To put that in context, a trillion dollars is 1,000 billion. So 1,000 of these times 35 is how much debt the United States is in, which is insane. Now, is there a way out of this? Probably not that much, but how do you at least stop the hemorrhaging? Maybe one day work to back, to, to back yourself out of it, maybe. Well, as RFK says, Bitcoin can help solve the US debt crisis. 
I don't know if it'll solve it, but it could, it could, right? Especially if they get aggressive and really start doing something like we're about to talk about in this video here. Now, as you can see from Watcher Guru over here, Donald Trump is considering BlackRock CEO Larry Fink as a treasury secretary, the New York Post reports. Now, I told you guys last week that he was also considering Jamie Dimon, which felt like an odd, odd fit to me. This one seems much more natural. Now, will Larry, is Larry up for the job? I don't know. I don't know if this is rumors. Let me know in the comments below if you guys know this is true or not. But I had heard that BlockRock opened up a $430 million or $340 million short on Donald J. Trump's company uh, before the assassination. I don't know, but I have no idea, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so as you can see, Stephen over here says, Dodge Toshi says, Trump is a Bitcoiner, Vice President is a Bitcoiner, and Treasury Secretary is a Bitcoiner. You, I'm shorting the strange. <laughs> People are crazy. And as you can see here, uh, Joe Biden is, you know, I don't to read this to you. He's officially stepping down, if you weren't familiar with that already. And just so you know, there was an interesting turn of events. Uh, so when Gensler said he was stepping down, the crypto markets actually corrected a little bit. And they, you know, the markets hate uncertainty. And so with Joe Biden running, people knew that Trump was going to win. That wasn't obvious. But with Joe Biden stepping down, they're not sure who's going to replace him. And that becomes uncertain. And maybe it's a quality candidate. But then, <laughs> then he endorsed Kamala Harris and the market started pumping again because they know there's no way she's beating Trump in an election uh, campaign. And Gensler, also gone in one year from now, are up dramatically. In fact, there's reports that he is going to try probably reside uh, by Q1 next year or something like that. So as I said on my, my X account earlier, Breaking Binance gains court approval to put customer fiat funds in treasury bills. This was pretty obvious because this is a net benefit for US dollar and US treasury and US. If, you, if you're anywhere in the world and you use Binance, you can put your money in and easily buy US treasury bills. This is actually really interesting. As we've talked about on this channel before, treasury bills is a good alternative if you're risk adverse. But for me, it's really hard to buy a treasury bill because I don't want to go to the traditional markets. I want to stay in crypto. So it was really hard. I actually looked for places where I could buy U.S. treasury bills with crypto, and I couldn't do that before. So it looks like now Binance is rocking that option. Who else is rocking something? Is Elon with his laser eyes. And as you can see from Eleanor Cherit from, I think from Fox 11 or something says, new Elon Musk just touched down in Tennessee and, the, and changed his profile picture to laser eyes. What's in Tennessee? Well... It's Nashville. Is Elon going to make an appearance at Bitcoin Nashville? I don't know. He could be over here with all the speakers up headlining with Trump, maybe. We'll see. And Benjamin Cowan says, uh, Bitcoin is at 66,000 and views to crypto YouTube channels are only averaging 800,000 per day compared to 4 million a day at the peak of 2021. Doesn't make me feel so bad about my numbers. But as you can see, it's just super, super, super low right now on this current chart compared to, you know, 2021, or even when we had this little bit of a bull run around Q1 of the year, or even Q3 leading into 2024, or even this crazy number over here, uh, you know, in 21. So that what that tells you is that retail still not back in yet. So if you guys are here, do yourself, or, do yourself a favor, pat yourself on the back. Congratulations. You're going to make it. You're definitely going to make it. So CoinGecko put out this report and they showed you where the top mine share was. And you can see, of course, meme coins were leading the way by far. Real world assets coming in second, which was surprising to me as I thought artificial intelligence would have been, but that's number three. So a lot of meme coins, 8.4, Solana Ecosystem 5.2, Base Ecosystem 4.6, Base Beam Coins 4.66, etc., etc. So we'll talk more about that in just a second here. The altcoin sector performance showing the same theme this as this cycle so far. AI coins rallying on the back of new grayscale decentralized AI fund launch. Meme coins doing what they do best, which is go up a lot when the rest of the market does. And you can see here that this is the AI and meme coins cracking. Now, look at the performance of the last seven days, right? And so I've seen some comments in the, in, in the just, you know, some comments in, the, in my videos. What about this? And what about this? But guys, remember, we're not going to call them all perfectly. But I am proud to say that we've called a lot of the winners. I brought you guys Popcat back way back when, when I think it was somewhere around $50 million or something like that. Maybe it was 30, I don't know, it was really low. And now it's approaching a billion. Whiff, again, we did over 100x on that. Pepe, we crushed it on that. Bonk, we crushed it on that. Turbo, I haven't talked about. Ponky, I told you about last week, up 70% since then. You're welcome. 
And, uh, and then from it goes on AI, Tau, we didn't get on that, but base is going to crush it. And, uh, you know, really haven't been too involved in these other AI, AI coins as I believe that they're not, they don't really qualify as that. When it comes to the Solana ecosystem, Jupiter, told you about that from last week, up 34%. Gito, told you about that a while back. Uh, Bonk, Ponky, exactly. And when it comes down to, you know, Ondo, well, of course, I gave, gave, you guys, but gave you Ondo on the day it launched as well. And House of Chimera says, Justin, five spot Ethereum ETFs to launch tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think is going to happen. Uh, I made it, I did run a poll on X before. I'll show you the results of that shortly. But here's the interesting thing. You know, let me know if you guys think it's going to pump or dump tomorrow. And here's the interesting thing though, right? So you can see down here, Grayscale Ethereum Trust, same high BS fees as before. However, the most interesting part here is that you have the Grayscale Ethereum Mini Trust, which has the lowest and best fees of all the ETFs. An incredible low 0.15%. Did they learn the lesson from last time? They win either way. If they're gonna, if people are gonna be selling out of the uh, Grayscale Ethereum Trust because of these high fees, well, if they wanna come back in, they might as well just go back to Grayscale because they got the best fees. Makes sense. 0% to start after six months, it's still the lowest at 0.15%, which is very, very smart, which is why I think that we might see a difference here. Also, people hopefully that they learned because if you sold the Bitcoin, your Bitcoin ETF when it launched and you didn't, you didn't buy back into Bitcoin, you are now down quite a bit. You lost money on that deal versus holding it as it's up much higher than it was. Here's the poll I ran. You can see it's incredibly close at 51 to 49%. If people believe it's gonna pump or we're gonna dump tomorrow, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. I am a bit torn on this. Of course, there's going to be outflow from, from uh, Grayscale, but is it going to flow back into Grayscale or are people learning better? Are Grayscale's asset managers better salespeople saying, guys, you don't want to do the same thing as last time. Look what happened to people who sold the Bitcoin, blah, 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 etc. But to give you some perspective here, Noodles says Ethereum ETF spot officially began trading on July 23rd. What we could expect from Ethereum here? As we can see, we have a, had 17 billion of net inflow for Bitcoin ETF since it began, despite 350,000 total Bitcoin sold from Grayscale and people worried about some German dumps, <laughs> some numbers and possible projections. ETH has a microcap one third or one to three of Bitcoin. Even the current European ETFs, we have about 1.25 million for ETH and 3.9 million for Bitcoin. So that adds up for about one third. So tell us that we could see 5 billion and 6 billion in the first seven months of Ethereum ETFs if we compare the current Bitcoin ETF numbers. And people told me <laughs> the bull run was over some weeks ago. Now that could have a significant impact on the price of ETH. So do you really want to be bearish on ETH right now? I'm still holding all my ETH as I've had forever. And I'm glad I am, to be honest with you. You know, it's good to diversify. It's good to have the two biggest assets that are going to be bought up by institutions. Why wouldn't you do that? Bitcoin and Ethereum make a lot of sense to me. Now, Chainlink, as I talked about so much before, of course, Chainlink is the beta play on ETH, right? So if we go down here and we look at the compared to Ethereum, you can see it really mimics very, very closely, but is a beta play to Ethereum. So when Ethereum pumps, Chainlink pumps harder. So if you're bullish on ETH, definitely bullish on Chainlink. Plus, as you guys, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you know how bullish I am. You know the reasons I'm so bullish. If you're new to the channel, go watch my videos on Chainlink about why I'm so bullish. It's about to be insane. Sergey over here, founder of Chainlink says, accelerating the adoption of digital assets and smart contracts in TradFi is just a start. Once the world's largest asset managers and banks are on chain, the next step in connecting them to DeFi protocols is already powered by Chainlink. Once there's a single standard for how transactions work correctly across multiple chains, as well as the two worlds of DeFi and TradFi, then we will enter a global internet of contracts, the true promise of what our industry has been working towards. Right, and so they are, I think, the only ones set to capture, like I say, the mycelium of the financial markets moving forward because everyone's gonna be on chain. You know that from Larry Fink, everyone's gonna have private and public blockchains. They're all gonna have their own blockchains, customize them with own validators, and they all need to be able to talk to each other. Well, Chainlink has built that mesh network 
that allows them all to send messages and transact value across chain to chain, whether it's public or private institution, whatever. And we can listen to this little clip from Sergey. But Chainlink as a system is constructed in a way that it's flexible enough to work with all kinds of data and to create connectivity across all kinds of chains. So right now, the world we are really inhabiting is a world where the Web3 market, the DeFi market, the real world asset market in the public chain world is continuing to grow and continuing to be more and more heavily driven by high quality data from Chainlink, high quality connectivity across chains from Chainlink CCIP and high quality computations like automation to make the contracts work. About 80% of those technical problems are reapplicable to the technical problems of banks and bank private chains. Now, all of those different groups I mentioned before, all of the banks, all of the asset managers. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, sir, the, the, he's been thinking about this for a long time, basically trying to solve this problem or working on this problem since even before 2017. I think since like 2015 or something like that. So as Don Chainlink over here says, Chainlink, the world's largest Oracle network, now has 2,438 integrations, CCIP, which is that connectivity layer. Adoption continues to grow. 116 projects have actively integrated CCIP on at least one of seven different blockchain mainnets. We actually allow RWAs, RWA tokens to come into existence. So if you're bullish on RWAs, bullish on the institutional world coming in, you should be bullish on Chainlink. As you know, Commonwealth has integrated Chainlink recently, of course. And Chainlink says, we are excited to launch Chainlink Digital Asset Sandbox, a turnkey solution for accelerating innovation in capital markets. This new sandbox enables financial institutions to conduct tokenization trials and collaborate proof of concepts within days, not months. So if you're an institution and you want to try tokenization, you want to try blockchain, you can just go to Chainlink's sandbox now and you can try it out, plug in what they built and see what your business is like using it without having to try to build the solutions on your own. It's actually insane. And as you can see here, the tokenized asset opportunity is measured in trillions. So the Northern Trust and H HSBC estimate that five to 10% of all assets will be digital. And a joint study by Boston Consulting Group and ADDX projects the tokenized asset market to reach 16 trillion or 10% of the GDP. And who is positioned to capture a lot of that value? It is Chainlink. And as you guys know, if you watched my last video, I talked about protocol pump player or PPP. Chainlink is going to be doing that big time. If they are the mycelium, if they are the infrastructure that a lot of this value settles and transfers on, and they charge a small basis point fee on all of that, that revenue is going back in the Chainlink token and ecosystem. Huge, absolutely huge. So what I wanted to bring you guys to is one of these altcoins that are coming up right here is this is something that I am excited about. They're actually a channel sponsor. It is Chainswap. And Chainswap is really, really cool because it's integrated CCIP. And so I actually just used it before I made this video and to try it out. And it works really well to, you know, right now they have limits on it. I think it's up to $5,000 or so, depending on what chain you're transferring from. But it works really quick. It works really seamless to swap assets from one EVM chain to another EVM chain. And as you can see here uh, from Chainswap, they said introducing instant cross-chain swaps on Chainswap. We're excited to announce that instant cross-chain swaps are now live on uh, Chainswap. This latest feature to our one-stop trading shop allows you to seamlessly swap assets across different blockchains with unprecedented speed and efficiency. Why choose Chainswap for your cross-chain transactions? Well, you got instant swaps, experience lightning fast cross-chain transactions without any delays, seamless integrations, effortlessly connect and swap between favorite blockchains, secure transactions, enjoy the highest level of security and reliability with our cutting edge technology, broad compatibility, support for a wide range of blockchain networks, ensuring maximum flexibility for trading needs and get started. So guys, it's not a bridge and bridges are so, so dangerous in this space. This is where the majority of exploits have happened on bridges. The nice about CCIPs, it's not a bridge. So you don't run the risk of, of like bridge exploitation. So if you're transferring value, you want to use a secure platform or secure protocol to do that. And so I just used, for example, earlier uh, Chainswap to transfer USDT on ETH to USDC on base. Worked very, very well. Here's the website, chain-swap.org. And here's what the app looks like. Again, I just use this. It worked really well. You can see my transaction has succeeded. They're also rolling out a Telegram bot very, very soon as well. And right now you can see, let's go back to the, let's go to the max chart over here. And this is exactly what you look for in a really bullish project. Something that comes really, really high 
And of course, just like everything else, it corrects and you have this nice descending triangle over here. And it's this likely, we'll see if it's likely to break out over here. Now, I'm not saying to go buy this, but I wanted to bring your, your attention because maybe you should take a look at it as a 40 million valuation is probably quite low for something like this. That could be the infrastructure for things like RWAs, for really all the institutional types of assets that are going to be tokenized that Larry Fink talks about, that Sergey talks about, you know, the $16 trillion of, you know, essentially uh, assets that could be tokenized here might be trading on something like chain swap it would make a lot of sense uh, as they've integrated CCIP. Now, Popcat, another one I talked about last week and I've brought you guys a long time ago. You can see it's number two in, or number four in Mindshare up from basically nowhere. So very, very bullish on Popcat, Pop as I told you guys, cat narrative, cat meta is insane. And Crash over here, who's the biggest promoter of Brett, basically you can read this on his X account later, but we told you about Brett bot last week and what does Crash think it potentially it could do? He's got some pretty good math here to explain his logic and the re his reasoning, but he thinks that there might be 150 million US dollars of buyback pressure on the Brett token from the Brett bot. And this is so when we come to protocol pump player, very, very good. <laughs> if he has $150 million of buy pressure coming from the protocol itself, plus speculation, plus effect, as Max says over here, as I've said before, there is no base token, right? So if you want a direct exposure to the success of base chain, you're going to want to buy Brett, right? You're going to want to buy Brett. And I have a huge bag of Brett. I've been telling you guys about Brett since like very early, like $150 million, something like that. Now, at, I don't even know, 1.3 billion, 1.4 billion, something like that. And I think, you know, both Crash and over here, Max, both think that it can go to 50 billion, this, this bull market. I think it could go even higher if base, it, but you know, it's not going to just do it like this seamlessly, but if the base chain becomes like the main onboarding chain and the Brett token basically represents the exposure to the base chain, and it's a fun meme that anyone can buy with the Coinbase smart wallets seamlessly, can even go much, much higher, potentially even, you know, that maybe $89 billion valuation that Doge saw last run as well. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do that, but I do think it's going to go way, way, way higher than it is right now. So I've got my bags packed. How about you guys? And Senator, the United States Senator Cynthia Loomis says that big things are in store this week. Stay tuned. So what are my thoughts? My thoughts are, I don't know what's going to happen with the Ethereum ETFs tomorrow when they start trading. Yes, we'll get some sell-offs, but is that going to get transferred back into Grayscale when they sell from Grayscale Senior Trust into the Mini Trust? I don't know. Have people learned their lessons? Are they going to not want to lose out on the potential gains and knowing everything that I've just told you is happening soon? If they're smart, they're not going to sell. And we know from hearing that there's people foaming at the mouth to get their hands on some ETH while it's still cheap. And so we could be seeing a huge run starting as soon as tomorrow. And if Trump does talk on Saturday and mentions Bitcoin as a strategic reserve for the United States, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, this will be the pump of a lifetime that literally will make life-changing gains. That's going to be it for today, guys. If you like this video, watch this one right here. It's even better. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.